Hey, hey everyone. So today I'm going to be doing a video that I've been meaning to do for a long time, but I've been putting off because it's going to take ages. And that is to Geekbench 5 benchmark every single Android head unit that I currently am in possession of. Android head units are so much more than just the hardware specification. It's the features and usability and design and lots of other things that go into them that make them actually good. Benchmarks are designed for phones and tablets where you're playing high-end games, you know, and you're gonna stress that hardware out and you wanna make sure it's suitable. That kind of stuff doesn't really happen on Android head units because the main reasons why you have them is for maybe a bit of streaming, but mostly navigation and music playback. So they're never really gonna be stressed out. And I'm stressing them out with these benchmarks. So I, I really recommend if you're looking for an Android head unit to buy, use my review videos. I've reviewed every single one of these head units. I've assessed their speed, I've assessed their usability, their car integration, their features, everything. That is what you should use when you're deciding to buy an Android head unit. This is more for those of you out there who want to really see if I push them, how far they'll go. To understand what I'm doing here, you need to understand what benchmarking actually is. Benchmarking is software that pushes hardware to its absolute limits, which has two main reasons. Firstly, to identify just how powerful that computer is. And secondly, to identify if the computer has any instabilities when running at that load, at the high load. Because what you could find is that the computers overheat or otherwise fail when they are running at full load. And that is what I'm gonna be doing with the head units behind me. I'm gonna be running Geekbench 5, which is benchmarking software for Android devices. And I'm gonna be giving them a score based on whatever Geekbench comes out with well, hopefully giving you a score because there's a possibility that Geekbench might not complete because the head units might restart under the pressure because they can't deal with the heat or something else. So we'll wait and see. Obviously, that's not something that I want to see, but at least I'm going to be able to rank these head units in order of Geekbench score and then present that to you at the end. <sighs> right, let's get on with it then. Okay, let's just pause a quick sec just to explain a couple of important bits. We'll start with the circumstances of FAIR CPU benchmarking. All of my tests were performed with the latest version of Geekbench 5 with no other applications running and with no outside interferences. Most of the head units were benchmarked here in the studio on my desk with the exception of three which are currently installed in vehicles and were subsequently tested in situ. These were the iDoing 13.3 inch head unit currently installed in my Saab 95 NG, the EKIY which is currently installed in my Saab 93 convertible and the iDoing 10.25 inch head unit currently installed in my friend's Mercedes C-Class. The next thing we should talk about is what the results actually mean. You'll have seen that Geekbench gives two CPU results, one for single core and the other for multi-core. Both of these are important. There are still a lot of apps out there which have not been designed to spread workload over several cores and therefore their performance will be limited by the speed of a single CPU core. However, nowadays, many Android apps are designed to run multiple threads simultaneously, such as Spotify and Google Maps. Each thread can be assigned a different CPU core, effectively allowing the application to make use of multiple cores at once. For example, Google Maps may use one thread to fetch a user's location, while another thread is used to render the map. And we haven't even talked about Android itself yet with its scheduling system that distributes tasks across multiple CPU cores to ensure that the workload is evenly balanced. For example, if one core is busy processing audio, the other core may be assigned to handle the graphics. This also helps with the background processing because Android can use multiple cores to process background tasks while the user is using the device for other tasks. This helps to ensure that the head unit remains responsive even when running multiple applications simultaneously. 
Anyway, let's talk about these results a bit and I'll remind you again that this is just the results of CPU benchmarking and nothing else is tested. You'll see that there's two in red here and these are the ones that didn't actually complete the tests. The chicane just would not run Geekbench full stop so I couldn't test it. And the iDoing head unit did run Geekbench and got about 90 something percent through the test before it crashed. Now I did try it twice and each time it took 45 minutes to get to the point where it did crash, but it would not complete the test. And that might highlight some form of thermal issue where it's overheating and switching off. That is unknown at this time. But anyway, those are the two that didn't get through. I also threw in a couple of older Android head units that I'd had for a few years. So I've got the 2018 Joying here and the 2019 Extrons. I just put them in there so that you could sort of get an idea of how they compare to the other modern units. So it's clear from these results that the Unisoc UIS 7862A CPU blows every other CPU out of the water in these tests. The EKIY scores the highest for a single core by a hair, which is great considering its excellent price. I mean, if we list by multi-core, you'll see that the Makidi wins for the highest score on multi-core by quite an impressive margin. You'll also see that this CPU is used in multiple different brands of head unit, but they are benchmarking at slightly different. This could be due to multiple factors such as thermal throttling, which is where they're getting too hot, so they slow down to prevent damage, or speed could be affected by other built-in hardware or even background Android system processes. But it's also clear that the units with the lowest scoring CPU, the AC8227L, having two gigabytes of RAM does significantly improve the score from units which have one gigabyte of RAM. And the higher end units, having different variations of RAM doesn't really make that much of a difference. One of the more fascinating things on this is the difference between the TICC3 2K and the 360 model, which seems to have quite a significant difference in score. And they have the same processor and the same configuration, I believe, um, but clearly that's not the case. It might be some slight thermal throttling down with the 360 version over the 2K version. So the second highest scoring CPU for both single and multi-core is the Xtron's flagship unit, the Qualcomm QCM6125. Interestingly, its multi-core score is higher than the TI-CC3360, which is meant to be a faster CPU. Third is sported by the DeSata units, the PX6, and the PX6 scored around half of what you get with the uh, UIS 7862A. So let's talk about bang for buck when it comes to benchmark scores. At a budget of $150, the Croak is gonna be the one to go for because it does score 100 points more than the other ones of the similar price range. Increasing your budget to $200, then you're gonna to want to get the Atoto A6 which scored 732, which is the highest multi-core score and it's more than three times higher than the Croak. Raising your budget to $240 and you can get yourself the EKIY, which has that beastly 7862A CPU and it has the highest score for single core in my entire list, including one of the highest multi-core scores. $300 is gonna get you the iDoing seven inch. And this head unit is the cheapest seven inch head unit, which has the 7862A CPU. Although I will say that the TI's is only $10 more and it has a similar specification. Then going to a budget of $380 will get you the Makidi, which holds the highest multi-core score. And finally, $475 will buy you the Atoto S8 Ultra, which holds the highest score for a seven inch unit. You'll find this spreadsheet in a link in the video description and I'll keep it updated as new head units are released. I feel the urge to stress again that these stats are only one aspect of what is needed for a decent Android head unit and Android head units are not tablets. They require other components and software to make them usable for cars, and these vary massively in quality too. You also need to think about things like longevity and warranty, etc. In many cases, significantly better head units may simply benchmark lower than cheaper head units because they have focused their attention on other areas of quality. Please look at my individual review videos for respective head units and make a decision based on that. If there are other head units that you've seen that appear to be a good specification that I have not reviewed, Please tell me and I'll have a look to review.